and it's one of the most famous cipher machines of all time. It was used by Nazi Germany in the Second World War to send their secret coded messages. Um, if I type in a message like, um, hello, so hello, I say. So I'm going to type in my message, hello. Let's see what happens. So first I type in H. And if you can see that, the letter E lights up. So H becomes an E. This is your code. Now if I type in E for hello, I get O. Now if I type in L, I get Z. Now if I type in L again, the second L becomes E this time. Now that's very interesting. But I'm going to fin finish off. If I finish off with O, and I get M, and M lights up. And the letters that light up are your code. And now you may have noticed something unusual about that. Uh, particularly the two L's in hello became two different letters. And this is what made Enigma so difficult to break. So let's take a look inside the machine. So if we open up the lid, if we unscrew these bits here, we can open up the lid, take a look inside, and inside, mm, not quite like a typewriter inside anymore, but what we've got here at the top are three things called rotors. And inside these rotors, try and imagine lots of wires. If I press the letter, and if you can see this, the rotors move. In fact, the rotors rotate, which is why they're called rotors. So the rotors move. This rotor here on the right-hand side moves every time. When it does a full revolution, it kicks the middle rotor one place. When the middle rotor does a full revolution, it kicks the left-hand rotor one place. So we have a fast rotor, a middle rotor, and a slow-moving rotor. Uh, but the wires for the circuit are inside these rotors. The wires turn. They physically move. As they move, you will break one circuit, make a new one, and it will light up a different board. And that's really all that happens. That's how it works. Thank you.